Yuri Vitrenko is the CEO of Naftigas, joins me from Washington. Sir, so the, the, the plan is to try and get as best position as you can ahead of a winter. Now, I know it's sort of we're barely in the summer, but I guess winter's around the corner in the way you plan. Yes, uh, we need to secure uh, the next winter season. Um, winters in Ukraine can be strong, uh, cold and long. That's why uh, Ukraine needs to import, uh, unfortunately, still uh, natural gas, although we're working on our complete energy independence. And I'm here in, in Washington, D.C., uh, to secure supplies of U.S. LNG to Ukraine. And what would be the route at which you would get it? How would it get to you? There are terminals all over Europe, uh, in Greece and the Netherlands, uh, that uh, in Poland, uh, in Turkey, that uh, can be used uh, to uh, then transport uh, natural gas to Ukraine. So it will be regasified uh, in these terminals, and then it will be transported to Ukraine via pipelines from these countries to Ukraine. Inside the European Union, uh, there is a good interconnection and a very developed pipeline system. So it's not a problem in many cases, at least in most cases, to bring gas from LNG terminals in Europe to Ukraine. And indeed, I remember recently covering, I think we may have spoken to you about this idea of integrating Ukraine into the EU distribution um, uh, pipeline tr pathways and channels, which makes it easier. But you've still got to pay for this gas. And that's going to require money. And that's also what you're seeking. Yes, exactly. Uh, by the way, again, we promised and delivered. Uh, we have already integrated Ukraine into the European gas market, uh, again, into the European uh, gas grid. So it's not a problem at the moment. Uh, European companies can uh, go through Ukraine to some other European uh, countries. They can store gas in Ukraine. Right. That's exactly what they're doing even during the war. But in terms of financing, yes, it's a challenge. We're talking about a rather substantial amount of money for Ukraine. It's about $8 billion. That's what is needed to finance these gas purchases ahead of the winter season. And that's uh, uh, something that I'm discussing here in Washington, D.C. as well. Uh, luckily, the U.S. government is very supportive. They understand that it's in the interest of the U.S. citizens to stop this war that Putin started against the whole free world, because it would result in economic benefits for the people throughout the world. When you talk about this, the, the financing of it, I mean, I, I, and, I, and I'll preface my comments, of course, that nothing compares to the loss of life and the misery and the ruination of people's lives at the moment in your country. I mean, nothing compares to that. But Ukraine's financing requirement, both for ongoing salaries, pensions and the like, medical care and, that, and now gas, is going to be considerable for the foreseeable future. Are you finding any fatigue from countries? No, we're not finding any fatigue. Uh, it's the opposite. Uh, we are finding that uh, more and more governments uh, um, demonstrate their very strong support to Ukraine because their societies uh, demand it. There is a very strong public support for Ukraine. That's what we see at the moment. They also realize that, again, it's just from a rational point of view, it's in the interest of the Western governments to uh, make Ukraine right. stronger, more resilient to win against uh, this Putin barbaric aggression, not just against Ukraine, against the whole U world. Ukraine just happens to be on the so front line of this war. I've got to ask you the same question sort of many other European countries have been asking. Shouldn't you have become more independent of Russian gas post-Crimea in 2014? Um, yes, of course, uh, nobody is perfect. But, if, for example, if we look at the reality, we decreased uh, consumption of gas dramatically because of the reforms that we had starting from 2014. And Naftagaz, uh, the company uh, I lead, was a driver of these reforms. So uh, we uh, decreased our right. imports of gas in general three times over the last eight years. Um, we're not buying directly, as you have mentioned. Uh, we were buying from the European market. Again, it's also an important step forward because it means less corruption. It, it means transparency that Ukraine was playing according to the European rules because corruption was a problem in Ukraine. And Russian gas was just a mean for the Putin's regime to corrupt Ukraine. So it's not right. uh, any longer the case. Uh, final question. I mean, let's look to the future. Um, and uh, one of the as, as Ukraine looks to join the EU and all the other things that are now 
very much possibilities and realistic. Do we not also have to remember there were very strong reasons why you were never allowed? And there were the issues of corruption and they were the issues of, of governance and transparency. Do you see that changing in a sense that makes Ukraine more acceptable on traditional grounds rather than just let's get Ukraine in because there's a war going on and we need to protect Ukraine? Uh, yes, uh, again, uh, I talked to some world leaders and to some world uh, global CEOs and they all recognize that Ukraine currently uh, is much, uh, I would say, like a better candidate uh, for the EU because uh, Ukraine is serious about fighting oligarchs, fighting corruption, uh, uh, doing all the necessary, sometimes very painful market reforms. But they also recognize, they just could not uh, tell uh, it in public, that uh, one of the reasons Ukraine was not allowed to join the EU and to join NATO was uh, that many European leaders wanted to appease Putin. They were afraid of some kind of retaliation from the Putin side, or they were, some of them at least, uh, diplomatically speaking, too close uh, to Putin. They benefited from some commercial relationship with some uh, Russian entities. It's not no longer the case. They realized that it was a mistake or naive, reckless behavior from their side to appease Putin in such a way. Ukraine should be a part of the EU. Uh, Ukraine belongs to the European family. Europe will be stronger with Ukraine. And of course, Ukraine will be stronger with Europe. Yuri, it's good to have you on the program. So we will talk more as the year moves on and we find out how you're faring. We'll talk more. I'm grateful for your time tonight, sir. Thank you.